What's good, everybody? Mark Gunderson here. Um, I've been down the past couple of days. Stomach bug. I'll, uh, I'll be back to making videos on the regular uh, fairly soon. <coughs> I came across this. Um, this is an interview from uh, from Talk is Jericho uh, between Chavo Guerrero and uh, and Chris, of course, um, Chris Jericho. This is regarding uh, probably the last known conversation of uh, Chris Benoit before the, um, the 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 tragedy that 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 befell the Benoit family. Um, you know, regardless of what exactly went down, um, this is a very interesting. Um, just little interview, just little story of um, of Chavo's last interaction with Chris. Chavo and Chris were very, very close. They traveled together for a long time. Um, Chris was close with Eddie, who you know was close with Chavo, you know, and who was also close with Jericho. I mean, the, the this was a very tight knit. Um, fold of, of guys who, you know, wasn't just WCW guys as a lot of fans see it, you know, these guys, you know, they traveled Japan together, they were in ECW together, they really cut their teeth in the wrestling world together, and um, I'm going to shut up and go ahead and hit play on this. I'm not sure when this interview took place, I don't know how recent it is, or it had to be... It has to be pretty recent, being that it is on Talk is Jericho, and uh, Talk is Jer the Talk is Jericho podcast has not been, it's not been out very long, I don't, I don't think, but uh, let's, let's get at it. I went my way, he went his way, and in two and a half days, we were going to hook up again, you know, we were on the road again, so now it's... Uh... Belmont, Texas, I believe. And I... Uh, this is on like a Saturday or a Friday? This, this is now Saturday morning. Okay. So the, the first one we left about probably Wednesday morning. Yeah. So now it's Saturday morning, early. I land in Dallas, my connection, and uh, we always that's, we always get on the phone and, you know, we can coordinate. What time you get in? Yeah. The whole deal, I'll pick you up or he'll pick me up, whatever. So uh, I call him, no answer. Then all of a sudden I get a, a call from him. He's like, oh, call right back. Hey, Chavo, hey, what's up, man? He sounds just off. I'm like, man, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, man. Just, just really bad, a really, really just bad weekend. I just, you know, Daniel and Nancy are sick, his wife, you know. And, you know uh, so you're actually talking to him at this point. I'm right? talking to him, yeah. And, he's and this is basically after he's probably killed his wife. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. They're sick, you know, they're not feeling good. And I'm like, all right, all right, cool. And, well, are you coming in? Yeah, uh, I missed my flight. I missed my flight, but don't worry, I'm going to catch another flight and, and I'll be there. Okay, I could just call me when you get in and I'll pick you up, you know, no matter what time it is. You know, I, we were landing in Houston, I had to drive to Belmont, and um, I was like, you know, don't worry about it. We're late, we're late. I'll, I'll wait for you. Okay, okay. So, he gets off the, he, getting ready to get off the phone, and and he goes, he makes a point of me, he stops. He goes, ciao, ciao. I go, yeah, and he goes, I love you. I said, I love you too, man. It wasn't too odd, you know, off off kilter because we always tell each other we love each other. Yeah. But this was really forced. It was not it was not forced. It was really like made a point of it. It was like, hey man, okay, I love you, brother. Okay, no, it was like, Chavo, I love you. I want you to understand this. Basically, yeah, if you don't forget this. Coming from a man with very few words. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right, I love you too, bro. So I hung up and I thought, that was strange. So I called him right back. And I go, hey man, are you, are you all right? I'm fine, man. Like I said, I just had a a real hard weekend, you know, and, and, and just you know, you know, real hard weekend. And they, 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 I had to go take him, you know, Dad, Daniel and Nancy to the hospital. And I'm like, oh, okay, man. Well, I'm here. Okay, okay, man. Okay, cool, cool. So then hung up, and that was the last I actually talked to him. I guess he called Scott Armstrong too. We, he and I hooked up. Scotty, we hooked up, and we ended up driving, waiting for Chris. No call, no call, no call. I'm calling, hey, dude, did you miss your flight? Did you make your, another, your, your new flight? No call, no answer, no answer. 
okay, well, I guess we've got to drive. Well, if we got to come back, you know, we said, if we got to come back from and go pick him up, we will. So we went to the show, and, you know, the agents were asking, where's Chris? Where's Chris? This is a house show. House show, right. House show. Where's Chris? Chris. Next day, it was, was, it was a pay per view. Yeah. And he was, well, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Um, this is why, you know, he's going to, okay, okay. So um, we drive to Houston the next day, me and, me and Scotty. And, uh, and still no word. Still no from Chris. We're calling him, okay, nothing. I get some texts on my phone at probably 5 a.m. And I get texts from Chris. So you wake up in the morning, you've got Not texts. even before. It woke me up before oh, okay, at 5 text. in the morning. So I look, and I look at the uh, my text, and I'm like, that's weird. It says, the dogs are in the enclosed pool area. The garage door is open. I looked at it, I was like, well, that's weird. Is this one of those texts you get? You know, sometimes you get texts, you know, from three days ago, you never delivered, yeah. and then all of a sudden you got a text. And this is kind of the start of texting, you know, now it's a little different. But yeah, back it was then, 2007. A lot of times, you know, texts didn't come through and they got lost, and all of a sudden you got them, and I was like, what? Well, you get weird. half a text. Half a text, yeah, that was weird. So, so okay, I, I wrote it off. Then I get another text from Nancy's phone, from his wife's phone, and it said the same thing, you know, the same text. That's really weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, I kind of wrote it off. So then I had to get up two hours, so I got up. I look at, uh, I go downstairs to meet uh, Scotty Armstrong, and uh, I look at him, I go, did you get some weird, anything weird last night happened? And he goes, yeah, I got some weird text from, from Chris. I said, me too. Did it say this? He goes, yeah. So we call Chris. No answer, no answer, no answer. That's weird. So we go to the pay-per-view. Chris isn't showing up. And they're asking us, where's he at? Uh, I'm not sure. We're not sure where he's at. Now we're covering for him. We right. think maybe, you know. Blatantly we're, lying for yeah, him now. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, you know, we're blatantly, you know, whatever. We're just coming from, no, I haven't heard from him. I don't know what's going on. Okay, great. Didn't tell us anything about the text, nothing. Did that, you feel something was going on weird Something, Something was going on. Something was going on. And I remember Arn Anderson saying, this is later on in the day, because he was supposed to wrestle the pay-per-view. He was supposed to wrestle for the title. For, yeah, the, the ECW championship against CM Punk. He was supposed to wrestle for him. Wrestle him. And this is a big match. Mm -hmm. Um. And I remember Arn Anderson saying, you know what, if Benoit didn't show up with no word, he's either has just taken off to, like, Alaska and he's going to be, like, a, you know, a merchant marine or something, or he's or he's dead, basically. That's, and, and I remember him saying that, not meaning it, as he, he said, right. but there's something going on for him not to show up. And either option being just as viable, because I can see him just going off to become a merchant marine, saying, and, and screw this. Yeah, 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 and being gone, you know, basically, right. the, the ending of Dexter, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, and then, uh, so I didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. The next day, we're in Corpus Christi for a super show, another super show. And uh, those damn super shows, man. Yeah. Always got yeah. Me. And you still didn't know anything. We still didn't know. We've been calling, been calling, been calling. So finally, I go to Johnny. I said, Johnny, Johnny was the head of talent relations. Mm -hmm. I go, Johnny, this is my phone. This is what I got yesterday. And he's like, you know, with his Johnny voice, Travo, hey, what are you talking about? Why didn't you show me this yesterday? I said, Johnny. We're trying to cover for him. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you, I didn't know what was going on. We're covering for him. He's like, all right, let me get on the phone. So I guess they called the Atlanta police or whatever, and, and I don't know anything about it. You know, That's the last thing I heard. And then all of a sudden, about an hour later, they do a big old meeting at the ring with all the wrestlers, and then they did this periodically, you know, to talk about, you know. Yeah, they would have like a, like a team meeting. Yeah, where the company's going, or, you know, Vince had to say something big, you know. So yeah. we go to the meeting, we're sitting there, and I look at Ric Flair, and Ric Flair's crying, and, and I go, Rick, what's going on? And he goes, they're gone. I said, what do you mean they're gone? And I, this is before anybody knew anything. And he goes, Daniel, Nancy, and Chris. And I said, what do you mean they're gone? And I, ha I had to hear it from his mouth. I couldn't hear, his, hear that. He said, they're gone. What do you mean they're gone? He goes, they're dead. Just now, right now, my heart just dropped again. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt. I was like, and, and Vince hadn't announced it to everybody yet. And I'm sitting there ne next to everybody, and I just put my head down and was like, oh, what? Well, are you kidding me? This is like two years, a year and a half after Eddie died. Yeah. You know, I. And that's about the gist of it. Um, we We know the rest. They uh, they did they do the tribute show. Uh, more, you know, more information comes out, and they slowly but surely realize that they just eulogized a murderer, uh, uh, the murder suicide of of Chris Benoit and and his family, is um, is is one of the most bizarre um, stories that I ever tried to wrap my head around. It seems pretty obvious on the surface what happened, 
when I was younger, I wasn't so sure. I, I had all kinds of these weird conspiracy theories. I, 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 it's just hard to see one of your heroes become a villain, I think, you know. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what happened is what happened. Um, all the abuse and damage that he had done to himself. And even more so evidence is... It, it's evident in this conversation that he had with Chavo where he was telling his friend goodbye. Um, there isn't too much more at, at, you know, to the stretch of the imagination as to what happened. So, and I know there's still some people out there who are in the camp that, you know, Chris Bumal was framed. Just, Put that shit to rest. You know. You don't know. You know. No one really knows. No one was there. But all things. Point to. What you know. What we all know is evident. Evident that happened. Have some respect for the dead. Um, I make this video out of respect. Um, also just. I, I thought it was very. Uh, paramount for anybody who has any kind of mild interest in this uh, in in the in the Chris Benoit situation to to hear this interview with Chavo because it is very telling and uh, well I just wanted to share that with you guys um, I'll be back with uh, more videos probably later this weekend I have uh, some more stuff coming out later this week some announcements um. I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. Um, again, thank you for watching my content. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all the love and support that you guys show. Um, this is Mox Gunderson, and I'll see you later.